Hey, sister Sharon. Ooh, you know what I mean? So Sharon still ain't came by. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna come get you one of these days. You wanna ask for a hot dog? Sabbath peace. Ask Eli for a hot dog. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the hope for the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And given freely as a gift Zahar. to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. I hear some feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's how it's going to be when we, you know what I'm saying, we got to record T. All right, there we go. Um, <clears throat> maybe that echo is good. Let me know when our mic is out. <laughs> <laughs> Um. All right. So last week we talked a little bit about some of our kings. Let me get them on the screen here, so we can um kind of review. So we talked a little bit about some of our kings. Let's get them on the screen, and let's see who we talked about. Right. So we definitely talked about um a little bit about Baasha. Remember, Baasha took over. He killed Nadab and Jeroboam, according to the prophecy of the Most High God. Then his son, Eli, Eli took over. But then Zimri came and Zimri killed him and killed Baasha and everybody, according to the, a similar pro prophecy of God. So it was just like the one of Jeroboam because Baasha, you know what I'm saying, made things worse. Then after that, Tibni and Omri, well, first uh, uh, Tibni tried to take it from Zimri. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Tib <clears throat> Tibni and Omri had to battle it out. Omri ended up taking it all. And then remember, he built up a city. Who remembers what that city was called? Let's see if we can yeah, look at yeah. it. It was Samaria, right? Let me see. So this Schumer. was the city. Named it after Schumer. Oh, sorry. I had a yeah, here, Here's the city, Samaria, right here. So he... Schumer. he Schumer. Huh? No, no. Go ahead. Yeah, so he built up uh, Samaria, and that's the kingdom. That's important because we're going to see eventually in the book that many of the kings stay in Samaria. And then it's going to get to the point where Samaria is just recognized as representative of all of the northern tribes. So Samaria will be the northern Jerusalem, like kind of like how Jerusalem is in the south. That's what Samaria is in the north. Yeah, like a capital, you know what I'm saying? Like the capital of, of the northern tribes, right? So let's recap real quick, right? When we say northern tribes, we are talking about these tribes, right? You got Ephraim, Reuben, Simeon, Issachar, Zebulun, Dan, Asher, Gad, Naphtali, Manasseh. That's generally the northern tribes. And then Judah, Benjamin, Levi, generally the southern tribes. Now, of course, we know that after Jeroboam took over the northern tribes, there were some people that went down to be in the southern tribes, right? And in although I can't think anywhere where it's documented, it's likely some people from Benjamin, Judah, and Levi who also went up to the northern tribes to live, right? Because we all one big family, people intermix and all that. But generally, this is kind of how things stand, okay? So um, we then left off with the beginning of Ahab, right? Ahab is Amri's son. He was just born, right? And after just being born, he uh, he uh, became became king, or not just born, rather, but he uh, he just took over the kingdom. Um, and so now we're gonna kind of get into a little bit of Ahab's life, just a tad bit of it, and then we're gonna go jump back over to the kings of Judah. Because remember, all of this time, let me put it back on the screen here. So all of this time. We had a king in place whose name is Asa, right? So he covered Baasha, Elah, Zimri, 
the little short stint of Tibni, Omri, and Ahab, right? A little bit of Ahab. All that was King Asa. Remember, Asa was the first good king after Solomon, right? So you had Solomon who, 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 you know what I'm saying, didn't necessarily please God at the end. Then you had Rehoboam who didn't please God, Abijam who definitely didn't please God. Then you had Asa who comes in and he started to try to clean stuff up. So now Asa has a son and we're about to learn about his son after we kind of learn about the a little, just a tad. I think we got a few verses left in chapter. Where did we leave off? Uh, we left off on seven or 16, I think. The 16. Of, so I think we got 16, a, we on 17. Now. So let's, I think we left off. A, I didn't, I, I didn't want to finish 16 last week. So mm. what, what verse we leave off on? Let me see. Let me go back. Cause we should have just stopped. I think we stopped right when we got to Ahab. And I think it say a little bit about the beginning of Ahab. That's crazy. Uh, First King sixteen one is what we on. <clears throat> nah, we ain't on one. Did we finish one? We don't think we finished one. No, nah, we didn't finish it. But we... I think we stopped at like Amari. No, nah, we we started on no no Ahab. Ahab. We had yeah, Ahab. we started Ahab. Yeah, so we on verse twenty nine. Okay, this is uh this is First Kings chapter sixteen verse twenty nine. Let's see what the book say. And in the thirty eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab the son of Amri to reign over Israel. Mm -hmm. And Ahab the son of Amri reigned over Israel and Samaria twenty two years. Mm -hmm. And Ahab the son of Amri did evil in the sight of Yahuwah above all that were before him. Right, so he did evil uh -huh. above all that were before him. Right? So Jeroboam was bad. You know what I'm saying? Nadab was bad. Baasha took it a little further. He was bad. His son tried to keep it up, Elah. You know what I'm saying? But then Amri came in and crushed the buildings. Right? Then after that, Ahab did more than all of them. Right? So he took it up just another notch. Keep going. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Right? So not only did he keep on all the traditions of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, but then what? He took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbaal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. Right. So now you gotta look at you gotta look at where uh, where she was from. So if you look at it, let me put it back on the screen here. She was from Sidon. Uh, isn't it like by Damascus? Yeah, way up north. Right. So way up here, she was from Sidon. Right. So he took her of another nation. If you remember, David was going to war with them people. Those are the ones that gave David some of the most trouble, even after he took over so many of the other areas. The people uh, of Sidon, you know what I'm saying, they, they gave him some of the most, most trouble. So now he took a wife from way up north, right? Keep going, watch this. They serve other gods up there. They ain't got no respect for our gods, and you're going to see how that kind of play out. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. That's right. I think before this was like every they were still worshiping you. He was just the wrong way. And mm -hmm. Is he like he like the first to bring in another god, right? Uh, heavily, yeah. Okay. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke Yahuwah God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Mm -hmm. In his days, did Hiel the Bethlehite. Bethelite built Jericho. He laid the foundations thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Sega, mm -hmm. according to the word of Yahuwah, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. All right. So that, that, was a, that was something, a prophecy that Joshua set forth um, in the book of Joshua after they tore down Jericho. Right. So it's just kind of tying that in for us together. So that should be the end of the chapter, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the beginning of Ahab. Ahab, we're going to read a lot about Ahab, mm -hmm. right? But I wanted to make sure we covered that. Now we're going to learn a little bit about Jehoshaphat. Let's go to um, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, rather, uh, Second Chronicles uh, 17. I think that's what I want. Yeah, it's, it's, generally what we'll see is the, the Book of Kings. We'll kind of cover, you know what I'm saying, the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah. 
And the book of Chronicles is going to mostly focus on the kings of Judah. So when we want to learn a little bit more about the kings of Judah, we have to go to uh, we have to go to Chronicles. Mm -hmm. So this is uh Second Chronicles chapter seventeen verse one. And Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. Right. So this is talking <laughs> about Asa's son. All right. So Asa's son name is Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. All right. So now we're about here. With Jehoshaphat. Let's see what he got. He placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and mm -hmm. in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not to undo Baal. He sought what? He sought not unto Baal. All right. So you can see. How T just noticed, Brother T, when he asked the question, he was like, you know what I'm saying, didn't Ahab, wasn't Ahab the first one to bring, you know what I'm saying, Baal there? Well, Baal was already there, right? But we're going to see from King Ahab that he take it up a notch. You know what I'm saying? He take it up a notch. He's going to make it almost like, like this is just a normal thing to do, right? But when it starts off, it's just something that's around. It's something that's seeped into to the traditions of our people. And uh, Jehoshaphat wasn't going for it. Right. So that's the difference. Their reign, they, they have their kingdom at the same time. If you were to look at the board, they kingdom Ahab and Joseph at the same time. Right. They almost live the same amount of time. So in doing that, you can see up north, we starting to go. We're going to learn that they starting to go through Baal. Right. They trying to they trying to worship a guy called Baal. Right. Joseph at most high God messed with him because he was like, you know what? You did it just like you did it just like your great, 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 great granddaddy. You know what I'm saying? You ain't looking for no other stuff. You only looking for the most high God, right? So the most high God respected that. Him. Let's keep going. Watch this. You know what I'm saying? You kind of got to, you kind of got to, at this point, you kind of got to look at religion as like, it ain't really even like religion, right? You kind of look at it like the government, the law. Yeah. It's like, like what we have is more like policy government. You know what I'm saying? It's government. And it's, it's like, uh, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's, our laws are tied directly to how our country is run. So you can't look at it like religion. It's not like it's not like something that somebody chose to 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 walk into and say, OK, I'm going to believe that. It's like, no, you were born in this. Right. And this is what governs. It's just like you walking outside to, you know, what I'm saying don't jaywalk or walking outside and don't litter. And, you know, what I'm saying drive the speed limit and all those things like that has nothing to do with what you believe. You know what I'm saying? You that's just what you got to do, or, else, or you gonna get a ticket. And it's the same thing with what we had, right? It wasn't like these people woke up like I believe in God or I don't believe in God. It doesn't matter. I live in the the country of Israel, or I live in the country of Judah. And while I'm in this country, if I don't keep the Sabbath, I might be stoned. Right. And so that was just the mindset of our people. We have to kind of like put ourselves in that mindset that this is legal, right? Then you got to look at all these other gods. Think of them as like, like sports teams, right? You're from a certain area. You then have this God that's popular. And maybe I'm not from that area, but I got a friend that's from that area. You know what I'm saying? So although I'm from LA, I'm supposed to like the Lakers, but I got this friend that's from New Jersey, and he always had me re rooting for the Nets. Then they moved to Brooklyn. So now I'm a Brooklyn Nets fan, right? That's kind of how it might happen, you know, although I'm in L.A. Well, the same thing. We in Israel, right? But now I get this nice, pretty girl. You know what I'm saying? Pretty girl from up north. Her name Jezebel. And guess what? Oh, she a fan of Bayall. But I love my baby. But guess what? When she go to the Bay All Games, I'm going to go to the Bay All Games with her. Except the games is like a temple. Right? And so you start to worship these things. So it's like, think of how people, you know, have sports teams and how much they care about their sports teams and how much they, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff. Think about it like that. And that's kind of how, how the gods work. You know what I'm saying? Like you have your team, you ride with your team. Sometimes you got two teams. 
You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got three teams that you like, right? But you that that's your you wear the jersey, you do whatever you want to do. It's kind of like that. That's kind of how these people kind of saw it, and that's what they had to kind of deal with back and forth, back and forth. So the problem is our law would would prescribe that we can't have no other gods except for the most high God. But think of the most high God, think of that team. It ain't got no logo. It ain't got no jersey. You know what I'm saying? Like our team ain't got nothing that you could just show. The other teams, the other, the other guys had idols, right? They had these temples that you can go to. You can set up a temple anywhere, right? It's a little more loose. You set up high places anywhere. Our God, no, you got to go to Jerusalem. You know what I'm saying? Even if you wanted to make an altar, it got to be an altar that's a pure stone. So nothing's really attractive about it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing. Like these other guys, you build an altar on a grove. You put all these plants by it, light a bunch of candles on it, all that stuff. That's attractive. It's like, oh, look at that. Make it look nice. You ever seen somebody, you ever seen like one of these Christian people, you walk inside of their house and they, you know what I'm saying? They got like maybe somebody that died in their family. The Mexicans do it a lot. You know what I'm saying? You got to die in the family. They set up a whole little shrine in the corner. Bunch of candles and pictures of them, all that. That stuff is attractive. You look at that like, wow, look at that. All the lights lighting up over there on that person picture. Right? Whereas us, we can't do nothing like that. That's not attractive to people. Right? That's why you see these churches. They have all the music playing. Because a lot of it is about attracting people. You look it up, we don't play no darn music. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing wrong with playing music, by the way. You know what I'm saying? But we don't play no darn music. We get right to the word. Well, the word's not attractive. Going through the book. Sister Sharon. She she uh she posted something on Facebook like a little while ago, you know what I'm saying? And she that uh I think the post was something about about um I don't know what it was. I think it was something about people leaving the church. I think it was like, you know what I'm saying, has anybody actually left the church or whatever and didn't go back or something like that. And so, you know what I'm saying, she posted it and you see other people kind of, you know what I'm saying, commenting and everything. But one of the things she said, she was like, Yeah, you know what I'm saying, at this point, you know what I'm saying, now I just kind of read the book. And then we cover it, you know what I'm saying, cover to cover. And we just go through the book. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, even as she posts that, that's not something that's going to make people look at that and be like, oh, yeah, I need to do what you're doing. Because it's not a track. That's boring. <clears throat> you just reading the book. You know what I'm saying? You just reading it cover to cover. That's boring. No, nah, you know what you need? You need somebody to jump up here and tell you, yeah, so let's read about how, you know what I mean, David slayed Goliath with one rock. He took the rock and he spun it. Go ask Auntie Tasha, baby. And then he slung it and hit Goliath clear in the forehead. Well, I tell you, there's the Goliath of your finances. And it's coming against you today. And God, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And they get to doing all this. Now it's attractive because now it's about me. It ain't about David no more. It ain't about God. It ain't about what God doing for us. It ain't about what I need to do to submit myself. It becomes about me and what I can do better and how and how I can conquer my finances with this metaphorical rock. And somehow now all the challenges and financial challenges I have are dead and gone. And I'm believing God for that right now. It gives me this hope, but it's not hope in the book. It's not hope in what God wants me to have hope in. It's hope in the superficial things. Right. And that's that's what sets what we do apart from everybody else. It's not going to be attractive. Right. It's not going it's not going to be you got to want it because you love God. You got to want it because you the most high God is pulling you. Right. A lot of people get caught up in a lot of other stuff pulling us. We get to lying to our friends, trying to get them to come to church. Right. We get to trying to compete. You see, a lot of these churches try to compete with with the social life. You know what I'm saying? They used to do vacation Bible study. You know what I'm talking about? So they attract kids. By luring them in to vacate, you know what we attract our kids with? Sit your butt down. You can read. Sit your butt down here. And guess what? You come if you want to come and you don't. Some of the kids, you, you ain't got no choice. You just stuck with it. You know what I'm saying? That's just the, that's just the cards that the most I got dealt you. You know what I'm saying? You stuck with it. You happen to be my son. You know what I'm saying? But the other kids, you come if you want to come. You don't if you don't. Right? But we're not tricking nobody to get here. We're not trying to entice you because that what happens is you might fall in love with what you've been enticed with. A lot of people fall in love with the church experience, but they never get they never fall in love with the most high God and his word. Right. And if that's not the if that's not the basis of the agreement, then it's all set up wrong. 
is no different than worshiping Baal on a grove, right? The only difference is you wash. There's no different than worshiping a, a golden calf in 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 uh from Jeroboam in uh, Bethel, right? If you're gonna worship God for the wrong reasons, right? And so that's what we try to do. We try to come in here and we try to make sure that we set everything out plainly. We ain't trying to attract nobody based off of nothing but the truth. And if the truth gets you here and the truth make you stay, then praise the most high God. And guess what? Praise the most high God if your butt don't stay too. Right? Either way, God is right. Either way, the right thing happened. And you know how I know that? Because I know we teach the right thing. That's it. You know what I'm saying? You teach it right. You teach what the book say. You stay close to the book. If we make a mistake, guess what? The book being read. We got to correct it because the book going to correct us. Right. But what we're not going to do is we're not about to sit here and make up a whole bunch of stuff, tap dance for people and make them feel good about themselves, even though they should. We ought to feel like sinners if we are sinners. We ought to feel like we're going to hell. We're going to hell. Right. Ain't no salvation. And ain't no salvation in feeling like you righteous and you really a sinner. There's no way to correct. If I feel right, there's no way to correct me if I feel right. But I'm actually wrong. I'm driving down the wrong direction of the road and everybody, everybody around me said, no, you're on the right, you're on the right path. You're going the right way. Why would I have any reason to turn if everybody around me telling me I'm going the right way, but really I'm going head on to a truck? Right? Only way to save people is to tell them where they are. Let's see, let's, uh, let's keep going. <clears throat> And the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David and sought not unto Baalim, but sought Yahuwah God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents and he had riches and honor and abundance. Right. So Jehoshaphat had riches and he had honor and it was in abundance. So that mean the people mess with him. Right. That's what, but that's what it takes. See, Asa had more of a hard road. Asa had to clean stuff up, right? He had to clean stuff up. He had to kind of start putting people in jail, punishing people for doing what they wasn't supposed to do. It was a harder road for Asa. But when you got a dad that come before you and line everything up for you, now all you got to do is just step into it, right? That's what we kind of look at when we talk about, well, last week we kind of talked about the generational curses. But what the Bible would call it, you know, that's kind of how we call it. But what the Bible would call it is the, the iniquity of the father being visited onto the kids to the third and fourth generation. Right. But he also said that he shows mercy to everyone who loves him and keeps his commandments. So now when you see Asa come in and he start to clean stuff up, that sets it up for Jeroboam to just step into something. So now Jeroboam, the only choice he got to make is let me keep with it. When he keeps with it, now the people has already been conditioned to respect righteousness. So when they see he walk in, it's a pleasurable thing. They start bringing him gifts. They give him honor because he's going to walk in that same righteousness. Let's see. Let's keep going. And his heart was lift up in the ways of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. That's right. Also, in the third year of his reign, he sent to his princes, even to ben Hayal. And to Obadiah, and to Zechariah, and to Nathaniel, and to Micaiah to teach in the cities of Judah. Mm -hmm. So he told he sent them to do what? Teach in the cities of Judah. You see the difference of what we're talking about. I love this because it's important to see. We just went through a span of time where you have Solomon. Solomon was good. Everybody was straight. Solomon prayed for the people. He laid a great foundation. Built the temple for us. Man, Solomon hooked us up, got us off to a good start. Then after, after that, Solomon kind of, you know what I'm saying, he started going a different direction, serving other gods, setting up other stuff in the land, right? That's probably where Baal first got introduced with a whole bunch of other gods, right? Then you look after that, you got Rehoboam. And Rehoboam, you know what I'm saying, kind of went wild at the end of his life, tried to get it together, right? Then after Rehoboam, then you got... Uh, Abijam? Yeah. Yeah. Then you got Abijam out there at the Rehoboam, and Abijah comes in, and Abijah is a mess. You know what I'm saying? He don't last too, too long at all. He's a darn mess, making a muck, 
Right? Then after that, now you got Asa. Asa said, okay, no, 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 no. We got to get this thing together. We got to clean it up a little bit. And look, he, got, he, he has a long kingdom. You can see it. Right? He lasts for a long time. Most high God look after him. So now Jehoshaphat is coming in. And at this point, since you have so many people that, that, that haven't been led properly, Jehoshaphat had the wisdom to give, to give duties to a few men to go out and teach the people. Like their main job was to go out and teach people, right? This is what the books say. I love that because that's what, that's what our people need right now, right? Our people need to be commissioned by someone with authority to say, no, you have to learn this. And it's y'all job to make sure they learn it. Right now, it's optional, right? Ain't nobody told and commanded, like, you know, you got to listen to Philip every Friday on, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's a requirement. Ain't no requirement. So guess what? You tune in, you tune in. A lot of folks don't even know. But it's important that if we had leadership to say, no, you have to learn these things. It's a requirement to learn these things. And it's y'all responsibility. You pick a few people. It's y'all responsibility to make sure they know. So this is what Jehoshaphat was doing. It's a wise, this is a wise king that we had. Watch this. Keep going. And with them, he sent Levites, even Shemaiah and Nethaniah, and Zedadiah, and Ashael, and Shemer, Sh Shemeramoth, and Yehuhanan, and Adonijah, and Tobijah, and Tob Adonijah, Levites, and with them Elishama and Jehoram, priests. Mm -hmm. And they taught in Judah, and had the book of the law of the Lord with them, and went about throughout all the cities of Judah, and taught the people. Right? So they went through all of Judah. Right? Let me put it up on the screen, because I want y'all to see. They covered a lot of land. All right, books say they went through all of Judah, right? They went all around this area. You know what I'm saying? All around this area. And they teaching from city to city. And they had what in their hand? The book of the law. Books say they had the book of the law in their hand, right? So they're going out and they're teaching people the law. They're teaching people what Moses commanded us. This is good for the people because now the people get to understand it. Oh, I ain't supposed to be messing with Baal. Why is that so important right now? We can get a, a Jehoshaphat to lose everything that he worked for. Yeah, that's one. But also, up north, you got a king that's doing the exact opposite. And we're all brothers. Like, we're all cousins. You know what I'm saying? So that stuff will seep out. So if people aren't aware that, oh, no, God take this serious. And if they don't have a king that they can look up to and be like, oh, no, he follow after the most high God. Right. This is what the law is of our country. This is what the punishments are. He's letting them know these things come with judgments. You get this wrong. I'm the king. You're going to be punished for this stuff. Right. He said an order in his kingdom. This stuff is very important that's happening. Watch this. Keep going. And the fear of Yahuwah fell upon all the kingdoms of the lands that were round about Judah so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Mm -hmm. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and tribute silver. Mm -hmm. And the Arabians brought him flocks, even 7,700 rams and 7,700 goats. And Jehoshaphat waxed great exceedingly. And he built in Judah castles and cities of store. And he had much business in the cities of Judah. And the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. And these are the numbers of them according to the house of their fathers. Of Judah, the captains of thousands, Adna, the chief, with him, mighty men of valor, 300,000. And next to him was Yehuhanan, the captain, and with him, 204 score thousand. And next to him was Messiah, the son of Zikri, who willingly offered himself unto Yehuah, and with him, 200,000 mighty men of valor. And of Benjamin, Eliada, and a mighty man of valor, and with him armed men with bow and shield, 200,000. Next to him was Jehozabad, and with him a hundred and fourscore thousand ready prepared for war. These waited on the king besides those whom the king put in the fenced cities throughout all Judah. So now look at how much our people have grown in this time. Remember, when we were in the wilderness, it was about 500,000, 600,000, I think, Men ready for war, somewhere around that number, right? And that was just that was just 
that was everybody. That was all of Israel, right? Men ready for war. You know what I'm saying? Somewhere like around 600,000 or something. Now you get just Judah. This is just the Southerns, right? That, that we just counted off about a million men ready for war. And this is just an isolated group, right? This is not even everybody. And this is only in Judah. So you can see this not this not counting the, the children, the women. This not counting the people who don't want to go to war, the people who didn't make it. You know what I'm saying? The people who just got married. There's a whole bunch of people that this not counting. So it's a lot more of us now, right? It's a lot more to manage, a lot more to deal with. A lot of people that got their own ideas. A lot of people that don't want to don't want to you know just like just like here, people that don't want to follow the law, right? Just like people that speed on the street. People that try to rob people, people that lie, people that cheat on their taxes, all this stuff. It's just people. It's always going to be people that just, you know what I'm saying, don't want to do what they're supposed to do. You got to deal with all those people. So he's going trying to go out and teach them and educate the public to let them know this is what's right and this is what's wrong. This is how the rules are. This is how we're going to manage this, this, this whole country. Let's see. Keep going. Now, Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. Mm -hmm. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him. Watch and this. persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. Watch this. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? Mm -hmm. And he answered him, I am as you are, and my people as your people, and we will be with you in war. All right. So now Jehoshaphat, he had an affinity with Ahab, right? The yeah, first this, time them two with Israel and Judah was cool. This is my cousin. Right? He's looking at him like, man, it's like we all kind of the same people. We've been going to war. The, the point that the brother just made, everybody been at each other. Remember, Baasha and Asa was at each other, right? Asa was at uh, 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 Amri, too. Right? Rehoboam so Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam, Jeroboam at each other. Right? So the, the north and the south been warned this whole time since Rehoboam and Jeroboam. So now we have an opportunity here to make something clean. Joseph Fapp taking the like, he's taking a whole different approach. He kind of looking at this thing a little different. He said, you know what? I like this brother. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he don't handle things the way I would handle things. But I like him. He's a cool dude. He probably, Ahab is probably a cool, funny dude. You know what I'm saying? He's probably a cool guy. Joseph felt like, I like him. I got people right now I disagree with everything they believe in, disagree with every, but you know what? They're they cool people. I enjoy being around them. I like them. You know what I'm saying? Your butt going right to hell. But listen, you a cool guy, right? And so that's kind of how, how Jehoshaphat is looking at it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just enjoy being around this person. Right? Yeah, okay, so he grew affinity with him. He hanging out with Ahab. Ahab running his kingdom. Jehoshaphat running his kingdom. Ahab asked him, like, yo, I'm trying to take out this, uh, this city called Ramoth Gilead. You going to ride with me? Jehoshaphat like, well, you know what I'm saying? You an Israelite, right? I'm an Israelite. Your people just like my people. My people just like yours. In other words, we in this together. Right? Watch what happened next. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, inquire, I pray thee, at the word of Yahuwah today. Right? Now, Jehoshaphat, got, he lived by a different level of standards. And this is, this is where, this is where, oh, I, love, I love what we're about to read. Because this is where we have to learn when we start to, you know what I'm saying? Live according to the scripture, live according to the word. We have to learn how to separate ourselves, how to kind of compartmentalize ourselves to make sure that we don't put ourselves in compromising positions. Right. What he just did is he's he's asking Ahab to handle this situation the way he would handle this situation. He said, look, we in this together. However. Ask the Most High God about this situation first, because i that's what I would do. Mm. I'm Jehoshaphat. I serve the Most High God. I don't make no moves like this without inquiring of the Most High God. 
I'm going to go to the priest. They're going to pull out the Urim and the Thummim, right? Remember, the Urim and the Thummim is the lots. You know what I'm saying? It's like two rocks. And that's how the Most High God communicated with the priest, right? So they're going to pull out the Ur Urim and the Thummim. They're going to cast lots. And we're going to figure out what we should do according to the Most High God. Well, Ahab, remember, he make his own priest because he follow after the ways of uh, Jeroboam, right? So let's see what Ahab said. Y'all pay attention. This is a good part. This is good stuff we read. Therefore, the king of Israel gathered together of prophets 400 men and said unto them, shall we go to Raven Gilead to battle or shall I forbear? Right? So the king of Israel is talking about Ahab. So Ahab gathered how many? 400. 400 prophets. Right? A whole gang of prophets. Because a prophet, in theory, would be hearing from God. So Joseph was like, hey, make sure you talk to God first. So Ahab was like, oh, no problem. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Bring all the prophets in here. 400 of them boys came in. Right? What else happened? And they said, go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. Right? All the prophets was like, oh, it's going to be prosperous for you. Right? Go up. The Most High God is going to deliver it into your hand. Watch this. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of Yahuwah besides that we might inquire of him? Right? So Jehoshaphat sitting there. I just like to imagine they, they kind of sitting in a room, you know what I'm saying, in the kingdom, and they have kingdom. Ahab bring all these prophets up. But Ahab, I mean, Jehoshaphat is listening to them. Because they probably, you know what I'm saying, when they prophesy, they probably doing it in a way to show that we not prophets of Yahuwah. So they probably say, oh, they all told me this, that, and other. You know what I'm saying? They probably... They probably using their own little they own little traditions to prophesy. And Jehoshaphat looking at it is like this is not familiar. So he knows that this is not, you know what I'm saying? Like these ain't my people. You know what I'm saying? Like these people don't rock with the most high God like that. Right? So then he asked the question, he was like, okay, well, besides all these boys, do you got any prophets of Yahuwah that we could listen to? Watch what uh, Ahab said. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of Yahuwah, but I hate him. Right. So now let's 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 just look at the reality of what we're dealing with here. Right. He calls all the prophets or a lot of the prophets. How many came? 400. When the man of God asked for a prophet of Yahuwah, how many do we have? One. We are outnumbered. Right? We are outnumbered. Right now, if 400 people stood in a group, it was 401 people in a group. 400 of them is saying one thing. All of them saying the same thing. And you got one person that's like, nah. Generally, right? Generally, how are we going to look at that one person? Like, boy, you a liar. You don't know what you're talking about. Clearly, you wrong. Everybody's saying you wrong. You the only one that believe that, right? And honestly, a lot of the times, that's the correct assessment. What's the chances of every time that there's this one lone person saying something that they write? We can't walk around assuming, oh, you the only one saying it, so you must be right. That's a trap too, right? So a lot of times, that's the correct assessment. However, a lot of the times, that's how the devil confused a lot of people out here. If you get a whole group of people to say the same thing, and you got this one lonely person that don't nobody know that's saying, yo, 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 that's not it. And guess what happens? Everybody hates that person. Right? Again, just because it's one person that everybody hates, don't make them right. You know what I'm saying? Because that's a trap. That is a trap. There's a lot of people, they call them contrarians. There's a lot of them people online right now. That they'll take whatever a lot of people are saying and they'll purposely just say the opposite just so they'll look like they this one person. You know what I'm saying? See, don't nobody, you know what I'm saying? Everybody try to, you know what I'm saying? The devil copy everything. The only thing the most, most uh, the only thing the most high God don't let the devil copy is righteousness. That's it. He can copy everything. So at the end of the day, you got to tie. You can't decide who right and wrong based off of how stuff look. It got to be based off of righteousness. That's the only way to do it, right? But you got to look at the scene that we have. Ahab is surrounded by prophets and only one of them that's in jail. that ain't even near him. Right. He is the only one that's the prophet of Yahuwah. 
right? That's the state of his kingdom. Jehoshaphat is looking at this like, this is not familiar for me. This is not how I run things, right? So let's see what happened next. But I hate him, for he never prophesies good unto me, but always evil. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. Right? So he says he always does what? Uh, he always evil, but always evil. No, nah, read before that. For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. Right? So this man always giving a prophecy. That thing ain't never prophesied good. He never comes to me and says, yo, 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 the most high God said, you're going to be all right. Most high God said, man, you about to take over this country. He said, man, this is never his conversation to me. He is always talking to giving me bad news is what he's telling. All these prophets, they he asked a question. Should I, am I going to go up and take Remit uh, Gilead? All the prophets. Yep, absolutely. You're going to go up. You're going to prosper. You're going to take it. Good news. He didn't even ask the prophet of Yahuwah because the prophet of Yahuwah is always giving him bad news. Right? And I hate him for I hate the fact that you always give me bad news. That's tough. That's tough. He gave him his name. It's Mike Iyer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We got one prophet. Joseph felt like, listen, you know what I'm saying? We, we need a prophet of Yahuwah before I go up there. Right? Then he's like, okay, well, we got one prophet. You know what I'm saying? But I don't like that boy. That boy always saying something negative. He always being negative. Right? It's, imp it's important that y'all understand and see the correlation to life. Right? The life that we live today. Right? Negativity is hated right now. And I ain't never seen more mentally unstable people in, in, in my entire life. And I ain't never read about it or heard about it in any other time either. Right. It's because we set ourselves up on lies. Looking in the darn mirror, singing little spells to ourselves, talking about you are perfect. You're going to succeed today. You're doing all these positive affirmations. And it's like it's not based off of anything fact based. It's not based off of anything real or true. You just repeating to yourself, trying to make yourself believe something, whether it's true or not. Right. So truth is not the priority in what you're saying out of your mouth. The priority is how you feel. At any time that you you present how you feel as a priority over the truth, that's dangerous. You turn into Ahab because now you surround yourself with a whole bunch of people that's going to tell you that something that makes you feel good. And you're going to put the person in jail that makes you feel negative, that makes you feel bad, that gives you bad news. Then you turn into Kanye West or you turn into, you know, say all these other superstars that surround themselves with yes men and anybody who try to tell them something that makes sense. They throw a tantrum about it. Right. That's how we're creating our society. Now you got a group of people that, no, nah, man, if you're not adding on to my life, if you're not contributing to my life, if you're not helping me get better, then you can. I don't have no place for you in my life. I'm cutting you off like that's That's everybody conversation right now. Everybody, they just post it every day, the same stuff, every day. I'm cutting you off because you ain't adding something to me. It's different nowadays. You look at that. You know what that person would call back in my day? A darn mooch. <laughs> we used to call them mooches. Yo, but always looking for somebody to do something for you? You always hanging out with the people that do something for you? You was a mooch if, you, if that was the case back in my day. But that's the mindset because it's all about how I feel. How do I make myself feel better? How do, I make, how do I make sure that somebody makes me feel better? It's never about helping other people out. It's never, it's never about, you know what I'm saying, building a consistency where y'all can have a relationship of exchange. Keep going. Let's see. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, mm -hmm. clothed in their robes. And they sat in a void place at the entering in the gate of Samaria. Mm -hmm. And all the prophets prophesied before them. Mm -hmm. And Zedekiah, the son of Kenanah, had made him horns of iron and said, thus says Yahuwah, mm -hmm. with these 
you shall push Syria until they be consumed. All right. So now you got another uh, another prophet, but now he's prophesying in the name of Yahuwah. So he said, look, look, look. He set up a whole little thing, got some horns, you know what I'm saying? Got a little scene because he's making it look legit. Because this is how our prophets are, right? Our prophets would use imagery, right? So he set it up. He tried to make it look legit. He's like, yeah, thus says Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying? He's going to push in there. You're going to win this war. Let's see what happened next. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for Yahuwah shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Mm -hmm. And the messenger that went to call Ma My Micaiah spake to him, saying, behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let your word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. Right? So a messenger went down, because Jehoshaphat was like, I, 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 I would hope we can get a real one. Because Jehoshaphat ain't going for this. He looking at this, and he like, I don't usually see it play out like this. You know what I'm saying? Because Jehoshaphat is used to this. Jehoshaphat probably been getting bad news with God his whole life. You know what I'm talking about? Like, nah, look, yo, yo, yo. Yo, uh, if you don't fix this and start teaching the people, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to strike you with play. Like, you don't know what caused Jehoshaphat to start making some of these decisions. It could be that a prophet came to Jehoshaphat like, yo, if you don't clean this mess up, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And Jehoshaphat was like, no, nah, I heard that. I heard that. No, nah, we're going to do this. Uh, you, 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 you. Start teaching the people right now. Just go on courts. Go around. Teach the people. We don't know what caused Jehoshaphat to do it. So Jehoshaphat looking at this, and I like to imagine that. He looking at this like, this just don't. Everybody saying the same thing. This just don't feel right. Like, I don't know about this. Jehoshaphat probably knows some of these boys. Like, I know he a liar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> God is never saying the same thing he said. I know that boy a liar. He ain't got no prophet to you. So a messenger go run down there to Micah. I. He said, listen, I'm just going to say it. Because Micah I in jail. You got to understand, he in jail. Messenger getting him out. Like, I'm trying to, the messenger trying to help him out. You got to you gotta see it from the messenger. The messenger <laughs> believe all this stuff. Like, he looking at him like, this is just what it is. You always, you a knucklehead. You always getting yourself in trouble. You just got to say some bad news. Why are you always messing with the king? Right? What they call them? They call them trolls. That Micah I would have been seen as a troll. You know, people that get online and they just always like messing with people. You know what I'm saying? To make, to make somebody mad. Like they poke, we used to be trolls. You know, now, like the way we used to be, they would call us trolls now. Right? We started that thing. You know what I mean? Boy, he put on the, we started that thing. You know what I'm saying? We had never called no troll. We started that thing. You know, they don't even do it right now. You know what I'm talking about? But that way, my guy would be seen as a troll. Like, man, you just poking at the king. You just trying to make him mad. You know what I'm saying? That's all you're trying to do. You're just trying to make him mad. But no, my guy is like, this is real. So the messenger trying to, in the messenger mind, think about it like the messenger trying to help him out. He's trying to give him a little advice. Like, trust me, just don't do it this time. I'm telling you, it's bad out there. Everybody's saying the same thing. If you come out there doing your regular routine, trying to be the opposite of everybody else, it's going to be bad for you, man. You want to get out of here, right? Jehoshaphat is asking for you. You know what I'm saying? This is your ticket out. All you got to do is go up there and say the right thing. Stop being stupid. You know what you're supposed to say. You know it. In his mind, you know what God telling. He probably said, you know God telling you the same thing you're telling him. Just go up there and say it. Watch this. And Micaiah said, as Yahuwah lives, even what my God says, that will I speak. Notice he said, my God. I'm not rolling with the rest of these boys. I don't know who these other boys is hearing from. As Yahuwah lives, the way my God said, that's what I'm going to say. Period. Right? And I'm going to stand on it. Watch this. Keep going. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto Micaiah, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? Mm -hmm. And he said, go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. Right? So now you see Micaiah. He's like, yeah, go ahead. You're going to win. Right? I like to imagine he did it with a little smile on the face to show that he was sarcastic. There's a lot of people that look and they say, it's no sarcasm. You know what I'm saying? Like, sarcasm is not in the Bible, or God is not sarcastic and all that. This is sarcasm. And I'm going to show you how you know. Because he, one, he said, go up there. Because remember, the messenger told him, just go up there and just say that. In other words, he didn't tell him directly, but he pretty much is telling him, go up there and just say what everybody else is saying. Right? He tell them, he responded, my guy had responded, was like, I'm going to say whatever God tell me to say. That's my guy. I'm going to say what my God told me to say. So he go up there and immediately he asked the question, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You got to imagine like the king is like, oh, it's a waste of time. You know what I'm saying? 
All right. We go up to Raymond Gilead. Are we going to take it? My guy, I look at him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going up there. You know what I'm saying? You going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? You going to take it. Go ahead. All right? Read it again. Watch this. And the king said to him, said to Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall I forbear? Mm -hmm. And he said, go ye up and prosper and they shall be delivered into your hand. Mm -hmm. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure you, to adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of Yahuwah? Right. So he's, he know he's sitting there lying. He know he is. Right. He look at him like, man, stop playing. Right. So that's how I look at it. Like. It had to be like sarcastic. He probably said it like with a little smirk on his face. Like, yeah, uh-huh. Go ahead. I dare you. You know what I'm saying? Like, go ahead. He's like, all right. So go ahead and tell me the truth. What are you who would tell you then, boy? Right? I adjure thee. Right? Watch this. Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains of sheep as sheep that have no shepherd. All right? So now he's starting to give them the real prophecy. He said, okay, well, since you asked, I saw all of Israel scattered. Like sheep that don't have a shepherd, right? Because you, you think a sheep, sheep will be in like a tight pack and you have a shepherd and they all follow that shepherd. So the shepherd start walking this way, all the sheep start walking this way. But then when there's no shepherd, the sheep start to spread out and they start following each other in groups, right? It's the same thing that we do, so right? You see sheep with no shepherd in the Bible, that always means we lose the battle or we're going in the wrong direction. Yeah, we going, everybody just scattered. Everybody on a different page. Everybody believes something different. Everybody doing something different, right? Bad and so man. that's what he's saying. In a war, that means that we're running away or we're losing that war. Like whooped out and everybody just start running. So that's the imagery that he put up. He said, man, I saw all Israel and they spread out. When we all together and we lined up, boom. You know what I'm saying? That's like sheep with a shepherd. We all following our shepherd, our leader. We all in order and we lined up. When everybody scattered, that's because somebody whooped us out. We broke ranks, and now everybody just trying to get away. And that's what he said he saw. He saw everybody just trying to get away. That's not a good sign. Let's see what else happened. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. Yeah, y'all sure was definitely sarcastic, right? So he said, these men have no master. Let them return to their house in peace. Keep going. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Right. So now you see Ahab, he asked him a question like, no, 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 no. Go ahead and tell me. What did Yahuwah tell you? Tell me the truth. Right. He tell him and he couldn't wait for him to say it. Boom. I told you what the boy going to say. He, he looked back at Jehoshaphat like I told you he going. He never say nothing good. I don't even know why you want to listen to him. The man never say nothing good. This is what he do every single time. He's trying to prove a point to Jehoshaphat. Watch this, though. Again, he said, therefore, hear the word of Yahuwah. Right? But Micah is still talking. Right? So he going there, he pointed to those that, see, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He never said nothing good. And Micah just jumped back in. But hear the word of Yahuwah. Watch this. I saw Yahuwah sitting upon his throne mm -hmm. and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up to fall at Ramoth Gilead? Now, now, this is the most high God. This is why you have to understand the scripture as it's written. This is the most high God, right? He saw a vision. The most high God gave him this vision, right? He saw a vision of the most high God on his throne and the whole host of the heavenly bodies, right? Everybody, in other words, like an army of heavenly bodies, of spirits, is on his left and his right. And the Most High God spoke out and said, what? Who shall do Who what? Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up to fall at Ramoth Gilead? The Most High God has asked the question, who is going to get Ahab? Who's going to essentially trick Ahab into going up here and getting himself killed? That is the question that the Most High God inquired about. He asked that question. Nobody else prompted it. That's him. Most High God said, yo, 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 who can, uh, who can trap this boy for me? Who can put this man in a compromising position to where he get himself killed? Who can do that for me? Right? Speaking in heaven. He not in hell. It say that he's in heaven. And then watch what happens next. Watch what happens in heaven next. And one spake saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. They put in the bid. So listen, anytime you want to do 
you know what I'm saying? You wanted so like I had to I got a concrete, you know what I'm saying? I got a concrete uh uh pad in my backyard, you know what I'm saying? Big old concrete for a basketball court, right? And before I did it, at first I was gonna try to build it myself. Took a little while to realize, nah, yeah. That you know what I'm saying? That thing ain't for me. Nah, that ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? But then after that, I started to show a couple people in my backyard the size I wanted, this, that, another. So what they did, I told them what I wanted. So what they did is they all put bids in, right? And they say, listen, I'll, this is what I'll do. This the design I got. This is how I do it. I use these materials, and I charge you this price. And I take it. I look at it. I'm like, okay. Then you get another company, and they say, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll do it like this. I'll cut this thing in little circles. You know what I'm saying? We got this little piece right here. This, that, another. I'll charge you this price. I'm like, oh, that's good, a little, little high, you know what I'm saying? But that's good. Then you get the Mexicans to come in. Mexicans say, listen, listen, listen. I'll only charge you this. I'll cut it just how you want. It ain't nothing fancy, but that's just what you ask for. This, that, another. And I say, that's what I'm going with, the Mexicans. You know what I'm talking about? Because they had the best bid. So that's what's happening right now when the most high guy asked. He asked the whole host. He like, who can do it? So everybody coming up like, yo, I can handle it this way. I do this, and I do that. Then the other one like, no, 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 I do it this way and I'll do this, but I'll also do this. But watch what happened. Then there came out a spirit and stood before Yahuwah and said, I will entice him. Look, then a spirit came out and said, look, this is what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I like to believe this spirit came up confidently. You know what I'm saying? Came up, look, 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 Mm -hmm. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Mm -hmm. And Yahuwah said, you shall entice him and you also will prevail. Go out and do so. Right. And even do so. So this spirit said, I am going to be a lying spirit and I'm going to make all of his prophets tell this lie about him going up to Ramoth Gilead and prospering. Remember, that is a lie. So in other words, he's not going to prosper when he goes there. In other words, he's going to lose. But the whole purpose of this is who's going to trick this man to go up and get himself killed. Right? In heaven, the Most High God asked for somebody to do this, and a lion spirit presented himself in front of the Most High God in heaven. You guys have to change how you view God's relationship with Satan. He was a liar from the beginning. The book says Satan was a liar from the beginning. It wasn't none of this myth, hocus pocus stuff that they tried to teach you that Satan was the, the most glorious angel and his name used to be Lucifer and, and he was the king of the choir or whatever foolishness these people be coming up with. And he got kicked out of heaven because guess what? He wanted to be God. Stop that line. You ain't never going to see nothing in the book ever where Satan say he want to be God. Where Satan ever even rolls his even thought about coming against God, trying to fight against God, never. Won't see it one time. You'll see him fight angels. You'll see him fight us. You'll never see him trying to fight God. Every time you see God and Satan interact, guess who obedient to who? Ain't even an issue. Ain't even an argument. You look at the book of Job. Yo, yo, yo. Satan, you consider my servant Job? Oh, man, he only get away with that because you let him, God. That's not a conversation to no equals. That's not a conversation to somebody who's trying to rebel. That's somebody who's subordinate. They're going to do the darn job I give them. You see the most high guy ask out, hey, yo, who's going to take care of it for me? You see a lion spirit? Who do you think this lion spirit is? That's Satan, boy. Satan pop up like, no, nah, I can do it because I've been doing this for years. I'm going to get it done. Most high guy said, oh, Satan, you shouldn't do that. Let me see. And the Lord and the Lord said, "You shall entice him, and you shall also prevail. Go out and do even so." Listen, you gonna prevail at what you go. You gonna be successful in what you do. It was the Most High God said to Satan, to the lion. Just be, just be accurate. He said it to the lion spirit. Satan being a liar from the beginning. That's what the book said. That's what Yahushua said. That's what Yahushua said. Right? You look at it. He said that directly to Satan or to to the lion spirit. He said to the lion spirit, "Listen, you gonna do that." And guess what? You're going to prosper. You're going to prevail. You're going to be successful in what you just said to me. 
and getting this man killed. Having every, you're going to be successful in having all these prophets cause confusion to get this man killed. Y'all have to change how you view God and how you view the relationship between Satan and God. Because once you do that, it's straighten up a lot of stuff. You ain't going to be running your mouth talking to Satan. Yeah, Satan, gotta, get thee behind me. You kind of got to understand that the most high God, like whatever happens, God signed off on it first. Like, it happened because he said this is what should happen. Yeah. yeah. This whole thing is a setup for you. So, so if you say not today, Satan. So if Satan really did get you, God kind of let him do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Talking about some Satan get behind me. Yeah, I like, rebuke thee, Satan. See, you got to understand. It's like, well, yeah, y'all sure rebuke. Why did y'all sure rebuke Satan? Because he's one with the Father. What does that mean, though? He is the Father. But what does that mean? He got the authority. He got the authority. Listen, I'm talking to Satan because I'm God, boy. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I can talk to this boy and tell him to get behind me, because he listened to me. This ain't no like, this ain't no conversation. I'm not just, I'm not talking to my enemy. I'm talking to my subordinate. I give him orders. He was confused because I came in the form as a man. Satan is man's enemy. Right? Y'all sure play different. I play in both roles. I can be both at the same. I'm God and I'm a man. I'm man. I'm God in the flesh. So Satan confused because Satan looking like, well, I'm supposed to be at humans. That's my job. <laughs> God told me to trick these boys. So it's weird now that I know you a human and I know you God. Still got to do my job, though, because I got to tempt you. But at the same time, it's like when God have so. Oh, man, I don't want to go to New Testament and start teaching New Testament because I don't want to get us too off track. I'm just going to tell y'all, but I want to show it to you bad, right? In the beginning, right, when you look at the Gospels, Yahushua will get taken out and Satan tempts him. It gives us three accounts of Satan tempting him, right? Yahushua had to be humble and take that because he had to have the experience of a man, of a man, That's right? Right? But he God, so when he have enough of it, when he's sick of it, Satan, get your butt behind. Him. When he's looking at these demons all over these people, get your butt out of there. And he casts out these spirits. We can't do that. Except for when Yahushua says, I gave you what? Lord. He gave specific individuals authority. What Christians tend to do and what they've been trying to teach us is like, no, he gave blanket authority to everybody in all time who, who accepts Jesus Christ in their life. And call on the name of Yahoo. Uh, what well, else say y'all sure? Call the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. Or, you, you know, anybody, you just get there and you say the sinner's prayer, Lord, I have sinned. And you forgive me. Forgive me for my sins yesterday, today. And tomorrow, <laughs> you eat people are sick, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna forgive you for something you ain't even did yet. I just give you, I give you pre forgiveness. I just give you a hall. That's what they call. I give you a hall pass. You go ahead. You know, it's already written off. <laughs> These people are sick in their mind. Like they only, they don't even care what the books. They just make it up as they go. And stand, but they stand firm in their lives. But how you? Why you think that happened? Because most high God stood up and he said, who going to be a lying spirit to get all these Christians and Muslims and Jewish and all these different people, these Hindus and all these different people to believe these lies. And you got one, two, three lone people trying to teach the darn truth. And everybody look at them like, oh, y'all crazy. Because that's how it works. That's how this thing is set up. Right? The most high God has the authority to talk to Satan, to come, yo, 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 who gonna do this for me? And Satan gonna do it. That's the relationship. That's the relationship. Satan obeys God. He just got different commandments than we do. Right? So when you, you'll see the book, you'll see the book call Satan the sinner. Cool. Because if we look at Satan according to our laws, he's a sinner, right? He does the things that our law would call sin. 
right? So that's why we would look at, uh, that's why the book, you will see it, it would call him a sinner because the things that we would call sin, according to our law that we're held by, that we're under, is a sin. Satan is not under our law. Right? Satan is under a whole other commandment. And he's a vessel that was created for destruction. Right? So his whole purpose is create, run amok out there, and I'm going to kill you in the very end of it. Right? That's his whole purpose. That's just what he created for. That's how I go. It's described, you can see it described in uh, Romans 9. We'll get to it one day, right? But all these things are set up. We have to understand that because now when you feel like Satan is attacking you, Satan is probably attacking you, right? But now to deal with that, you speak to Satan's manager. Don't speak to Satan. You have no business speaking to Satan. You have no business speaking to spirits. Satan is a spirit. You have no business speaking to spirits. Stop playing with stuff that we don't understand. Right? It'll tell you that in uh, uh, Jude. Yeah, in Jude. All the way at the end of the book in Jude. Yeah. He tell you that. These people speaking on stuff they have no, they don't know what they're dealing with. That's why stuff starts breaking out, you know what I'm saying, breaking out on all of us. Because y'all sitting there rebuking devils and demons and thinking y'all casting out demons like this authority wasn't given to you. I know you think it get passed down. No, it don't work that way. You ain't got nothing in the book. Every time somebody got some authority, it came directly from somebody who previously had that authority. Y'all but you know what I'm saying? All y'all got is lying, crooked pastors that's over y'all. Nobody got no darn authority in your group. Ain't people ain't speaking in no darn tongue. Ain't people playing in front of y'all face. Y'all letting them and giving them money and paying them to do it. That's crazy to me. Send me a little money. You know what I'm saying? I'll speak a little tongue for you. You know what I'm saying? I speak a little tongue. Well, I speak a little tongue. All I gotta do is speak a little tongue, get a little money. Shimmy, you know what I'm saying? I whisper a little bit. Shimmy, my mama. What you mean? Give me a little. You know what I'm saying? Give me a little five dollars for a little tongue. These people are crazy. It's sad because it got you. You got us believing this stuff. That in these churches want to speak tongues. Somebody you sit there and be like, "Well, I just know it's about to hit my mama." Get up running around the church. I'll be sitting there. Oh, that thing. It because it, it hit the whole row. You know what I'm saying? Something that you know it's something kind of real about that thing. Cause that thing it hit the row. It hit the first lady in the row. She get up, then the next lady get up, then the next. Then I'm like, oh, if my mama get hit, I know I'm that. Then my mama get off like, oh, here it come, here it come. That thing skip right over me and go to the next. I'm like, what type of stuff is this? <laughs> Have me sitting there doubt my whole thing. Like, am I safe? The Holy Spirit just get right over me. Am I saved? Wasn't no darn Holy Spirit. The Spirit wasn't no holy darn Spirit. Right? That's a blessing that the Most High God didn't let me fall into that mess. I'm sitting there in the midst of this foolishness. I used to think that too. Like, dang, how come I, my thing wasn't the tongues. It was like when the pastor was like, the Lord spoke to me today. And I'm like, he never oh, said nothing to me. Oh, and all I used to be like, I never hear God's voice. Like, what are they talking about? Man, I used to be sitting there like, <laughs> that one used to make me jealous. Now I'm, now I'm boasting that. I was just talking to my mom and my sister the other day about God just trying to let them know, like, okay, this is how it is. You can't rely too much in these experiences that you have. Experiences is good. And it's a blessing from the Most High. If the Most High God is speaking to you, you a prophet. Right? And if you be a prophet, that's a blessing. Right? But at the same time, could be a lying spirit. So you can't rely too much on just the experience that you have. That experience has to be anchored in something that's true. And the only thing that we can trust to be true is the most high God in his word, the consistency of the most high God's word. Right? So I was telling, I was like, okay, listen, I understand. I'm not saying you hear from God. You don't, that ain't none of my business. Whatever the most high God tell you is your job to do whatever he tell you to do. Right? What I'm saying is, only thing I'm saying, is confirm that it's the most high God. How do you confirm that? You read it from the book. That's it. Tie it all back to the book. If it's tied back to the book, then you all right. It's tied back to the book. Then you can, you can move forward with whatever you hear. Right. But now it's a boast for me. Right. It used to be somewhere. I'm just like, I'm like, why God never talked to me? Am I saved? Am I not saved? I don't know. Because everybody seems like God talked to everybody except me. Right. But now it's a boast. I tell my mom, it's like, oh, you hear from God and you God told you that. OK, that's cool. No, I mean, I ain't. There ain't none of my business. All I'm saying is God ain't never spoke to me. 
I ain't never heard like an audible word and he ain't never spoke to my spirit or nothing, none of that. You know what I got? Everything I got, guess where it came from? The book. <laughs> and even when I heard something, I was like, it must be my imagination because I ain't get no instruction after that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? The book. I didn't, have, I didn't have one little dream that maybe, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Maybe it ain't like what I hear in the book. It ain't what I read in the book. You know what I'm saying? So it was like that one, I look at it as maybe, you know what I'm saying? What was discussed in the dream? It was legit. You know what I'm saying? It lined up with the book, so I'll take it. But after reading like Isaiah. But I didn't get I didn't get nothing like go tell these people to do that. That's what I look at. I ain't I ain't no problem. Moses, I, I got I had one little dream that I can barely remember. You know what I'm saying? And Moses was talking to somebody. You know what I'm saying? That's it. That's all I got. And I understood Exodus a little bit better after it. You know what I'm saying? But that's all I got. Right? It wasn't no like, you know what I'm saying, go and tell, you know what I'm saying, this, that. He didn't show me, you know what I'm saying, son of man. You know what I'm saying? You got you got the you got the apples falling from the from the fruit tree, you know what I'm saying, and the oranges, you know what I'm saying, and the oranges hit the ground and bust. That's what I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, ooh, I don't know what that means, but I'm about, I'm about to go rally on Trump. You know what I'm saying? I want to walk up there, but the apples fell from the tree <laughs> and the oranges busted. America has seven days, you know what I'm saying? I wanna, boy, don't most I got no don't give me no me no better than no, listen. Most I got is wise. You know what I'm saying? Most I got is a wise guy. He no better than to send me with a dark dream, cause he know where I'm going with it. Look, look. I'm hopping right in the Kia, boy. Keep clean. I'll be back. You know what I'm saying? Don't even worry about it. No, I do this one on my own. We good. You know what I'm saying? Biden! <laughs> that says you You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go talk to Putin too. I'm gonna straighten it out in Ukraine. After reading Isaiah, you know what I'm saying? Two, when you guys start getting into the prophet books, you'll start seeing the burden of the Lord, and it's not. Nah, yeah, no, nah, it ain't what these. When they hear God's voice, it's it's a real heavy. heavy he ain't never. Yeah, I ain't never seen nothing in the book where he like. Yeah, you know I'm saying it's I'm gonna like, give you this prophecy to talk to your sister. Yeah, it's like it's, you know what I'm saying. It's bad. Like, it's like you don't even want to hear God's voice. I'm gonna give you. you I'm gonna give you this prophecy. Go talk to your neighbor down the street. Well, Isaiah had to be like butt naked for like three days. Yeah. Day. Yeah, boy. Don't put no clothes on and walk over here. And say, yeah, boy, man, had the young day. Is he got to lay on his side? Yeah, for hundreds of days. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you nuts? Are you crazy? This stuff ain't no. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no like. Oh, I just get a prophecy and I go. You know what I'm saying? Men, the men of God who got prophecy that we read about, they go out and they talk to kings, men that got power to kill your butt. You say the wrong thing to them. They ain't talking, they ain't dealing with no low risk situation where I'm just on, I'm just talking to my neighbor. I'm just talking to my family members. Yeah, no, most of God told me such and such. And it's always good news. That's why Jehoshaphat looking at this, he's looking like, man, there ain't no way. There ain't no way. Go ahead and give me, go ahead and find me a, a prophet of Yahuwah. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. What else happened? Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these people. Your prophets, right? So and now has spoken evil against you. Micaiah is now sat there. He gave a prophecy. He said a lion spear came. He painted the picture of how it happened in heaven. Then he come back and he said, "Now all these boys lying." That would you got to look at what he's saying. Flatly, he's just looking at all these boys lying. And the reason why they lying is to set your stupid butt up. Right? Watch this. Keep going. Then Zedekiah, the son of Kenana, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said. Which way did, went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak to you? Mm -hmm. To speak to thee. Right. So now Zedekiah which one of the men that, you know what I'm saying, that worked for, uh, worked for Ahab. He came and he pow, smacked that boy. He was like, okay, where'd that come from? In other, in other words, he was like, okay, where'd that come from? Why are you talking about a blind spirit and speaking to this? Pow, tell me where that came. You so smart. To ask God to tell you, pow, smacked him across his face. That's how they did the boy for telling the truth. But his truth is tough. It ain't like he just innocent, you know what I'm saying, telling the truth. The boy is talking to a king and telling the king, everybody lying to you. All the people that you trust are liars. And you about to get set up and you about to die. Right? Not necessarily. Did you say He didn't really say he's going to die, but he about to lose. He's not going to prosper. Yeah, he said he put a lying spirit in against you and spoke evil against you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he said, you know what I'm saying? He said, all these boys lying to you and they, they about to set you up. Right? So, yeah, we look at it and we believe that it's true. But if you put yourself in that moment, in the time, well, you got 400 people saying one thing and you got one person saying another thing. That's why my man slapped him. Right? 
I just want us to be able to look at the book in real terms. I don't want you to be, oh, look, Ahab is just so evil. Yeah, he is, right? And Zedekiah who slapped him, yeah, he's just so evil. Yeah, he is, but it's the same type of evil that your friends, your mom, your, your, your loved ones, your dad, same type of evil we deal with every day. The same type of evil that we look people in the eye and be like, man, that's a cool brother, just like we talked about with Ahab. That's a cool brother. Yeah, but they evil. It's the same type of evil. It's not like no, no super aggressive, maniacal evil. It's the regular evil. Yeah. It's the I think I'm doing the right thing evil. Yeah, and I'm not. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, half the time, I don't even know. I don't know. I'm just doing what I think is clever. I'm doing whatever my heart tells me to do. It's that type of evil. Right? Ahab don't know. Ahab been tricked. He got a whole bunch of people telling him what he want to hear. Zedekiah don't know. He looking at the numbers. 400 people saying this. The king go with it. I love the king. That's my man's. He don't like you. He say that you always saying stuff against him. I just witnessed it with my own eye. That was mad disrespectful. Bow! Because that's my man. I work for him. What you mean? Bow! <laughs> right? So now, the homie gets slapped. Let's see what happens. And Micaiah said, Behold, you shall see on that day when you shall go in when you shall go into an inner chamber to hide yourself. Mm -hmm. Then the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, to Joash, the king's son. And say, thus says the king, put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, if you certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, hearken all you people. Listen, what he just told him is, you're not coming back. You are dying out there. <laughs> right? You got to understand what he just told. What he just told him is you, because you have to understand, Ahab was like, go lock this. I'm sick of hearing it, boy. He got smacked. I'm sick of hearing it, boy. Go take him. Take him down. I'm not dealing with him. Go take him down to the governor. Listen, tell him, just lock him up until I get back. I deal with him when I get back. When I return in peace, I deal with him. And then smart mouth Micah Hyatt, he getting carried away. No, 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 let me tell you something. If your butt, look, if you, hold on, hold on. If he come back, everybody listen to this. If that boy come back, rest assured, y'all know I'm a liar. You know look, let me just, then now you gonna know whether I'm lying or not. If his butt come back in peace, now I said, well, take me away. You know what I'm saying? Then he took the boy away, but he looking at, he told everybody, hearken, pay attention, right? If that man come back, then I definitely haven't spoken by Yahuwah. In other words, but if he don't come back, all these other boys are liars, just like I said. And that's how we're supposed to understand a, a, a prophet. A prophet, what they say, chances are it's going to be negative. But whether it's negative or not, if it comes to pass, you should be known as a prophet. Right? Not all this other stuff that people deal with. Oh, well, God spoke to my spirit and I knew. You know, it's always something that they should have did, but they didn't. Oh, God spoke to me and I knew I should have did that. God told me to do this. No, no, God told any prophet to do something. It got done. Talking about what's wrong <laughs> that, with that you. That got done. These people, you know what I'm saying? These people making up stuff. Well, I don't expect none of this stuff. God listen. not even going to pick a prophet that don't get his stuff done. No. I'm not even listening to y'all but talking about, you know what I'm saying? They don't even, they don't even realize what they're saying when they say God spoke to them. They just think like, oh, no, I'm not a prophet. God just spoke to me. Okay. Yep. Got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Most like God, he say he speak to a person. It's going to be through what? A vision or a dream. And that's a prophet. That's a prophet. Except Moses. The only one you're going to find when God said, no, I talk to him right. You know what I'm saying? I talk to him apparently. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where these people try to put they self. Yeah, they don't under they don't understand to, what they saying. Like they don't Moses. They don't get it. They don't understand what they saying. They just think Moses was the only person. Yeah, ever they just think that this thing is that. oh, I accept Jesus Christ, and you know what I'm saying. I get I get the best of the best. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's wrong with you? Humble your darn self. People need some darn humility. Just like sit you your just, butt down. It's, it's it ain't like, enough. It's like you just got here. Let's just say you did accept him. Like you just got here. You know what I mean? Like you brand new. Can't even get your darn life together. Don't know a lick of the book. Don't know nothing but God talking to you all the time. You got to cut that out. Y'all don't know. Y'all think that stuff is innocent. Y'all think y'all just saying something and it's cool and it's okay and ain't going to be no big deal in the end. No, you, every idle word the book say, you got to give account for every idle word. In other words, the word that you didn't really think about and you just said it, it just came out your mouth. You wasn't even really, you know what I'm saying? You wasn't even trying to be precise. 
even that you have to give account. You're going to have to stand in front of the judge. You have to understand this, y'all. You have to stand in front of this man and you have to be like, nah. So look, when I said that, I would like you have to answer for every detail of your life. You know what I'm saying? Like these, y'all not getting it. Y'all not understand. Like this man going to put a highlight reel up in your mind. You it's going to take too long. It's going to be billions and trillions of people because it's going to be all life of people like people who everybody who ever lived ever. So y'all think it's going to take too long. You think God going to care about time? Your butt going to be dead, resurrected, whole body going to be put back together just so you can stand in front of this man. He going to put it, I like to imagine, he going to put it up on the, it's going to be like a, they all, what's the biggest TV they got now? Like an 80 inch? 80 or something like oh, that. Man, that boy like going to hit you. That boy going to hit you with like, a, you know what I'm saying? Like a 2100 inch. You know what I'm saying? That thing going to be huge darn TV. You know what I'm saying? That boy going to put you up there. You're going to be all big on that screen. You're going to be looking at that thing. All speculation. And that thing, yeah, it's all speculation. You know what I'm saying? That boy, that boy going to run that thing. You know what I'm saying? Going to run the whole thing and be like, no, stop it right there. You know what I'm saying? I like that magic guy with a remote. No, 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 stop right there. <laughs> What'd you say, boy? You know what I'm saying? What was that about? That got to be the scariest thing. In and the you got to, if you know you wrong. You know what I'm saying? Because no. it's like, no. it's like, we, we rolling dice right now, right? A lot, a lot of people rolling dice. They looking at it. They like, well, maybe there is God, maybe there's not, but YOLO. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to believe. I just have a spiritual, I'm spiritual, I'm not religious. You know, I just, who knows, who knows what's real, what's not. I just let God guide me day by day. I just follow my heart. Whatever people come up with, right? That's rolling the dice. But then once you, you dead, boom, got, you know, who knows how you die? You, you know what I'm saying? You got hit by a car, or, you know what I'm saying? Or you just got sick or whatever, right? You sick, <coughs> cough. You fall out, right? Next thing you know, you wake up and you see the man in front of you. You know you immediately, you like, oh, crap. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this was real? You know you wrong already. Then the man is going to take you through every detail of your life. You already know you messed up. You know what I'm saying? You knew just from looking at him, looking around the scene, you know exactly what's going on. Crap, this is the judgment, right? You already know now. You want you want to plea out already. You know, in the court, they'd be like, yeah, I'm pretty guilty. You already want to do it. Now I'm guilty. I got it. I'm guilty. I messed up. Now, nah. pause right here. This is April 7th, 2013. You decided to say X, Y, and Z. Why would you say that? At the time, what I would say, shut up! <laughs> That's how I like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how it's going to be, you know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you how I like to imagine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but the part that is factual, right? A lot of what I'm just saying didn't make it up, right? But the part that is absolutely factual is that the book said you're going to have to give account for every idle word. So that means it's going to be small detail, things that we think are not important, that the Most High God is going to ask us to give an answer for. When they say give an account, that means we have to answer for it, right? We have to be accountable to it. We have to say this is why it happened, right? And in doing that, you have to think about that. You have to think about, say, you know, all this stuff we just be running our mouth about, this stuff is not safe for us. You know what I'm saying? You just got to be careful. I don't even try to run my mouth about the whole stuff. And then you ought to be, you ought to be, you ought to glorify the fact that the most high God ain't talking to you. If you know God and you serve God and you love God and God ain't talking to you, that is the glory. And I'm not just saying that because that's the position I'm in. This is what he said. What did he say to Thomas? When Yahushua came, he died, he resurrected. And it was one man who didn't believe him. It was more than one man that didn't believe him, but it was one of his disciples that was just like, nope, ain't no way. Nope, I won't believe it until I see it with my own eyes and feel his flesh. That was his testimony. That's what he said. His name was Thomas, right? Most high God popped up to him like, yo, yo, look, feel, see me. He's looking like, oh, that's the real deal. He called, he said, it's my God. You know what I'm saying? My king and my, my God, my king. He knew he was like, this is the one. That sealed it for him. Him being able to see, that's a blessing. When the Most High God lets you see something and experience something, that's a blessing. But then after that, you know what the Most High God told him? Blessed are the ones who believe even without this experience. 
I'm paraphrasing. If you see, you believe because you see, but blessed are the ones that have not seen and believe. That's also paraphrased, but this is basically what he's saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. you look at that out of his own mouth. He's saying the bigger blessing is the ones who don't have those experiences. That's not me making it up. You have to reprogram yourself to glory in the stuff that the Most High God say glory in. Ain't nothing wrong. Like it is, it's a ble- it's also a blessing for the Most High God to let you have that experience, right? Both of them is blessings. But the one that the most high God called out is the one where people believe even though they don't. It's something greater in believing the most high God because he gave it to you in a way that's not apparent. There's something that the most high God must appreciate about that for him to say that. Glory in that. Walk in that. Believe the truth. Don't let these people you know, bully you into feeling like you got to have something apparent, that somebody got to see it. Somebody got to be able to, you know what I'm saying? That's all... That's all just fake stuff. It's glorious, vain. It's trying to get attention. You know what I'm saying? Oh, get all that stuff off attention. I don't even pray in front of my own wife. I don't pray in front of my kids. Because I don't want nobody looking at me and taking away the glory that the most high God. When I pray, I pray in the shower. I pray by myself. I refuse to even let us pray on the camera. For years, since the beginning, right? I don't think we ever prayed. We might have prayed on the camera maybe early on. I don't know, though, but we might not have ever, ever prayed on the camera. But it's like, no, nah, turn these things off. We can pray for y'all. I don't even tell people I'm praying for. It's rare that I tell somebody I'm praying for them. Only reason I might do it is I just I feel like, you know what I'm saying, they need to know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, like you're not alone out here. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I do it, but it's very rare. You know what I'm saying? But I'm praying for folks all the time. I used to have a whole whiteboard. I used to have a whiteboard set up in my room. And then, Phil, you come into my house. You will see there were just names on the whiteboard. You know what I'm saying? Every morning I'd go in, just run down the list of names, just saying a prayer for everybody I thought about. If I think about a new person, I'll write their name on the whiteboard. Right? And I don't necessarily do it like that. Now it's just more, now it's just more, it's more off the cuff. I just think about people and pray or whatever. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like you uh you gotta glo- you gotta find glory in the things that the most high God tell you to find glory in. And you gotta stand on it, even if it means you get slapped. Even if it means that you get put in jail. You know what I'm saying? Like when, when it's the right thing, when you, man, you got you to gotta be confident in the right thing. You got to take whatever come with it and be subject to whatever come with doing the right thing. And when I'm talking about doing the right thing, I'm talking about serving the most high God and obeying this book. Right? Keep going. Let's finish this one out. <clears throat> so, do you want to finish it out or you want to read more about Ahab? Because Ahab had like a long run in that. Book of Kings. No, we just gonna finish. What uh, what chapter is this? We still in seventeen, right? We need Chronicles, yeah. Yeah, if I was talking about finish out seventeen. So, so you want to end Ahab story right here? We on end today right here, but no, there's a whole lot more to Ahab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got we got to get well before we get we going to Elijah next. Yeah, because Ahab about to die. But in Kings, it tells you a lot about Ahab. So yeah, we going back to Kings, but we got to start with Elijah. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying, do you want to? So we probably should have did it the other way. We mm-hmm. should probably should have went to Kings first. So the people about can Elijah. see exactly Ahab's life and how much, like, this is why God put this sentence on him because Kings tell more about all of the stuff Ahab did to make God mad at him. You right. What um what what verse is this? This is twenty eight. Twenty eight. What's the last verse? Uh, Thirty four. Okay. Let's go ahead and stop here then, because you right. Next week, what we'll do is we'll pick up we'll pick up with Elijah, and we'll see how Elijah dealt with Ahab. Um, and that, a lot of that kind of precedes what we're looking at right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then, yeah, T is right. You'll get the backstory. You'll kind of understand a little bit more and appreciate it. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll stop right here. Any questions? Any questions online? I see some comments in here. Y'all active in here today? Yeah, Thor, gassing them right on up to an L. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, brother Phil. He silly says, "Hey, man." We are at the end of the chapter 18. We at the end of 18? Yeah. Second Chronicles. Yeah. Oh, we made it all the way to 18. I thought we was in 17. Okay. Well then, all right. So yeah, we'll uh <clears throat> we'll pick up, we'll pick up uh First Kings 17, I think is where we'll go. Yeah. So we'll go, yeah, we'll go to First Kings 17. And then we'll uh be introduced to Prophet Elijah. We got a lot to talk about with him too. Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out.